He says it started with the first competition in 1997 called Red Annihilation for a first person shooter game, Quake, where the winner of this tournament would win a Ferrari. So today, esports is bigger than ever. There are many esports teams, events, and organizers. With large prize pools and strong online communities and streaming platforms such as Twitch and YouTube. Due to the increase of viewers in the gaming community, more sponsors become attracted to esports and result in prize pools <coughs> rising. So as you can see there uh, in the in the, these images that were taken by Rich Taylor's article shows an increase of tournaments from 2014 and also their price pools how in 2000 the price pools were 514,000 whereas in 2014 some price pools for certain games reached 35 million uh, League of Legends a PC game has over 100 million players looking at their price pools the Dota 2, another uh, strategy game, international pool exceeded the 20 million this year, with League of Legends having more than $4 million as their price pool. So now that you know a little more about e the esports scene, I will tell you how professional players make a living under esports. <coughs> to do so, I will use Seth. An example of Seth Abner, also known as Scum, a professional Call of Duty player that plays for the team of Optic, as an example. So, players can earn money through winning tournaments, endorsements, a salary, <coughs> and their streaming. <coughs> Seth has earned over 300000 from 98 tournaments. In addition, he has a salary coming from Optic Gaming. He also earns income through his streaming on Twitch, which allows users to view esports matches and watch their favorite gamers play live over the internet. On top of that, he has a YouTube channel with over 2 million subscribers. Now that I've given an over overview of Scum's income, I will explain esports tournament and their funding along with revenues. <coughs> So esports tournaments, due to the incredibly popular popularity of many types of video games and how players from all over the world play these games, some events actually offer more than one tournament in a venue at the same time. Tournaments in esports will most commonly consist of two stages, a group stage and a bracket stage. All games are broadcasted to Twitch with commentators and journalists adding their own taste to the game. As of January 2016, ESPN has partnered with eSports to cover gaming events. The Alley Times from January 16th, 2016 states that given the passionate fandom that organization and the drama around esports, the storyline was so compelling that they decided there was no reason that they shouldn't uh, cover esports on a daily basis, <clears throat> with the same rigor that they cover National League football or other sports. So where does the pool money to fund these tournaments come from? <coughs> Smaller tournaments are typically organized by independent gaming leagues. These payouts usually range between 100000 to a million. They are limited due to the fact that revenue is driven by sponsors, ads, and ticket sales at events. However, when game developers come into play, they allow for crowdfunding. Crowdfunding includes game sales, uh, sales in the game, and this money is allocated to the tournament's price point. So with esports development as a lifestyle and source of entertainment for millions, it is more than just a passing fad. If anything, as the years go by and technology has 
ingrained more in our lives, it will only get bigger. The hours in demand on the teams or players is vast and not necessarily comparable to that of traditional sports. However, it is similar. Playing video games is no longer just a pastime for lazy kids to get away from reality, but now it is a fast-growing, high-paying job opportunity if you're good enough.